So what are you holding back right now for next year? I'm almost 30. I'm holding nothing back. I've, I've already shown all my cards last few years. <laughs> What's up, fellas? Welcome back to my channel. And I have a super exciting video coming for you guys today. I am here in Portland, Oregon. Nike has flown me out here this week for their global running media event. And so I'm here with a bunch of different media people all around the world. There aren't any other YouTubers here that I know of, at least from the US. It's more like traditional media, so I think it's kind of cool how I get to share this with you guys. Basically, Nike is unveiling a bunch of different new shoes for their 2019 year, and I get to basically show you guys. So I'm gonna be spending a lot of time at Nike. I'm actually leaving today, so I'm filming this when I'm leaving, but I got to spend a bunch of time on the Nike headquarters campus and talk with a bunch of different Bowerman athletes, which I know you guys are super excited about. If you follow me on Instagram, you've already seen that who I've talked to, so I basically documented my entire experience on Instagram pretty much. So if you want to take a look at that, I have like an Instagram story highlight at M. Abrahamson. You can look at that, but this is also going to be a whole recap of what I'm going to be up to. One of the main reasons why Nike sent me out here is because of their new Nike Free line. In the past when I thought of Nike Free, I thought of like very minimal shoe. I didn't really know its purpose, and I don't think a lot of people really do know its purpose, but I thought it was super interesting, like all that I learned. We went to a Nike free session where the product designers kind of taught us all about what the shoe is all about and, you know, the history of the shoe, how they kind of got sidetracked from what the shoe originally meant. So Nike free is pretty much about going back to your natural range of motion in your feet. And this is something I didn't really know going into this weekend. Um, obviously, you guys know I'm pretty peg loyal, so I don't really stray away from that, but this is the new Nike Free 5.0. This is the 6mm one. So I believe this is available for sale right now, but basically it's designed to strengthen your foot. It's kind of going back to where you kind of feel connected to the earth. Obviously barefoot running has become a huge trend. Um, I don't, I haven't really done much barefoot running in the past because I honestly I don't really, I never really knew the purpose. So basically this is a very minimalist shoe and it's designed to kind of mimic that barefoot running with the protection for your foot. Um, as you can see, like the range of motion is huge. It really is just like moves with your feet and I thought that was super cool. What I really liked is that they describe this um, as well as like other pairs of shoes as being like a tool in your tool bag when it comes to running. Like I'm not going to go out and run 50 miles a week in these shoes, but it's like if, you know, for warm up and cool downs, maybe I would incorporate this like a couple times a week for a couple miles just to feel, you know, the ground beneath me. Um, so it really serves a purpose in a running routine, which I thought was really cool. So that... Nike Free 5.0, cool. Okay, the thing that I'm probably most excited about for the weekend, for good reason, um, is the brand new Pegasus 36. Of course, this is what happens when I get too excited. The brand new Peg 36. This is what it looks like. I think the media were the first people to actually like announce that the shoe had come out because I posted on my Instagram that I was to, did a run in the 36s and then everyone was freaking out and I didn't really know that it was the first time these were being like announced so I wanted to give a good view because people were really wondering but yeah I've been running in these for the past couple days love them obviously not just saying this because Nike flew me out here but because I actually wear these almost every day so Okay, and the last shoe that we were given for this week was this Nike Trail Wild Horse. We went on a trail run in Forest Park and we got to run in these new trail running shoes. I have never worn trail running shoes in my life. Um, I usually just stick to the pegs. But being a clumsy gal that I am, you know, I fall a lot. So these shoes were great. I love them. Um, felt super good on my feet. The traction was really, really good. And I love that because the clumsy gal I am fall a lot, but I didn't fall once. Um, I didn't even trip, so that's saying something for me. Um, yeah, I really like these. If you do a lot of trail running, I think they're great. Throughout this video, I'm just gonna be putting in pictures because like some of the stuff I couldn't take video of because obviously I was doing the activity. Like I couldn't take any video of me trail running, which was sad, but there's a ton of pictures, so there you go. I wanted to show you one of my purchases. Well, I got this shirt from the Nike employee store, but I also want to show you my shoe purchase that I did. Um, these are the Nike Oh, I need to look it up on my phone. I have to look at my phone. <laughs> These are the Nike Air Max 270 Fly Knit. I'm trying to step up my like 
athleisure fashion game and I feel like these are a good addition to my closet like I'm I looked at these I was like okay I need these yeah I love the fly knit they're super comfortable I love the way like the fly knit feels on my feet because it really hugs my feet and the laces don't choke me so that's a necessary part of a shoot for me so love these <laughs> Vanessa, introduce yourself. Tell us a little bit about you. My name's Vanessa, and I ran at Stanford for five years, so I know Emma from the Pac-12. Oh, yeah. Uh, good times. <laughs> um, and I'm my first year as a professional with Bowerman Track Club, so I'm based here in Portland at Nike most of the year, training with Bowerman. What's your event specialty? Right now it's the 5K, but our coach Jerry is already talking about <laughs> how much he wants me to run the 10K. Wow, so. that's only double the distance. <laughs> So yeah. it's just an easy little switch. Only 25 laps instead of 12 and a half laps. It's fine. I'm not worried about it. Do you want to throw out some of your PRs? My PR in the 5K is 1509. And 15, that's so fast. <laughs> my 1500 is 409. Oh um, my. But yeah, right now 5K I feel like is my sweet spot. Yeah, that's great. And 1500, like 409, and then translating that to a 10K. Like, if you can run a 10K and have a 409 PR, that's crazy. Um, how did you decide on Bowerman? I think at Stanford, I was always surrounded by people who were really good and, like, better than me even in certain areas. And I like being around people who have strengths that are my weaknesses. And I've just always thrived in that environment. So... Barman obviously has a lot of strong talent <laughs> across the board from 1500 to marathon and so I just knew that that's where I would be really challenged and I'd also thrive in that team environment because you know some pros are kind of more on like a solo type training group which is totally fine for some people but for me coming from that big college team I wanted that you know, yeah. team environment. Yeah, I've noticed that I have the same experience. Like, surrounding yourself with people that are better than you makes you so much better without yeah. you even really trying. Yeah. Like, just being able to yeah. train with people, they just push you. And it is intimidating sometimes yeah. because I'm like, um, I mean, myself, Carissa, and Elise, the other newbies on the team, were the only people who haven't been to the Olympics. Like, <laughs> the <laughs> the amount of like greatness that we're surrounded by is kind of crazy sometimes. And yeah. It's kind of like do I really belong here? And that's something that is a struggle when yeah. you're training with the best of the best. But um, just kind of, as long as you can convince yourself that you belong, um, then I think it's really positive. You just sometimes have to get over that hump of like, <laughs> oh my gosh, do I being belong a here? Intimidated. <laughs> yeah. yeah, just yeah. preparing yourself to get dropped sometimes and being okay yeah, with yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, which is good because it pushes you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You're, you're humbled too. So, yeah. But if you keep training, like one day you'll be up there with them. So. Hopefully. That's yeah. a goal. <laughs> if you could give one tip to people trying to improve in college and high school, what would it be? Like, what was your biggest thing that you changed that helped you improve? I mean, it sounds super cliche, but I think just believing in yourself. And I came in, you know, with solid high school PRs to Stanford, but I didn't have any crazy PRs. I wasn't, like, the top recruit in the country or anything like that. And my college coach, Coach Milt, was so good about instilling how to believe in yourself and would always like he was the one who would tell me I could do something before I believed it yeah but as soon as I started to internalize that belief too and was like okay I'm actually just gonna say yeah I'm gonna do this then I feel like I could actually do it so it's so basic but it's actually no it's true. so true like mind over matter for sure yeah your mental side of it is probably more important than your physical yeah, side yeah yeah I mean you have to put in the work yes, obviously yeah and it also takes time that's yeah. the other thing this sport is like it takes a few years sometimes yeah. before you see the progress but if you can like keep believing through those years of hard work then it is like your mentality is what's going to actually take you to the next level I yeah think. I agree well thanks <laughs> introduce yourselves and give us a little like just a little summary of who you are and your accomplishments yes I'm Carissa Schweitzer and I'm from Missouri. Oh, oh can we start over? <laughs> yeah, just go. <laughs> Technically, I'm from Iowa, but I ran at Mizzou and six-time national champ. Yes. Low-key six-time <laughs> national champ. Uh, I'm Elise, and I went to Stanford University, and I am not a national champ. <laughs> um, no, I uh, am not an NCAA runner-up. <laughs> I have a school record holding the 1500, and... 
Yeah. All right. Throw out some of your PRs. Uh, let's see. Ran 409 in the 1500 and 1524 in the 5K. <laughs> Why are you laughing? Oh, gosh. 5K, 1502, um, 1500, 406, and uh, 10K, 32 flat. Oh my goodness. Okay, so these girls are really fast. How did you decide on Bowerman? Wow. Well, they have <laughs> the best women training in the world in the group, and I really wanted to be surrounded by people that I could learn from and could push me to be my best. Um, so yeah, it was mostly the group of the group of incredible women that they got there. To go off that, um, pretty similar, just being able to run with a group and obviously they're doing things right right now and it was just like really easy transition to come into and just really believe and totally trust into the program. So. And you guys are pretty recent out of college so how has the transition been from college training to professional level? Um, yeah I just finished in December so I've only been here a few weeks. <laughs> um, it's definitely a big big transition, more mileage, uh, the workouts are a lot more intense so um, definitely transitioning and getting used to that but got some wonderful people that have been here longer to learn from so. <laughs> I've been here like four months now and um, I'd say like at first the transition is like it's pretty hard because you're just like constantly tired and yeah. I'd say like every easy run was like it, I'm just like I never run this slow but it's so hard and I'd say like finally after like four or five months I'm feeling like an easy run's actually easy yeah. and like my mileage is built up a little more than I'm used to but I feel like I can finally handle it so what are you guys currently training for right now <laughs> we are mostly training. I mean, I guess the focus right now is USA's, which is end of July. Um, we don't really know our racing schedule yet. I think everything will be pushed back since Worlds is later this year. So right now we're just kind of in a training block. Well, at least for me, outdoor. Chris is doing some Yeah, cross. I have a race coming up soon, end of March. Cross? Yeah. Which what um, race is that? World Cross Country. So, oh, okay, where is that? Yeah, it's in Denmark, so oh. it's going to be gonna be hard but I'm excited and it'll be like first European cross race so oh wow um, yeah I'm excited it's supposed to be pretty muddy um, we run on like a roof I guess a uh, roof? Like, yeah like there's like <laughs> it sounded really vague <laughs> but there's roof like this building <laughs> there's this like building and we like run on top of it there's like grass on top of it so okay yeah it well looks, that would be fun it's really cool something yeah. different and just kind of testing that like 10k strength and then after that have a little downtime and build up again. If you could give one tip to all of the people watching out there to improve their running, what would it be? <laughs> oh man, let's see. I think I would say consistency. Okay. So like if you don't have a good workout or you don't have a good, like you don't feel good one day, just keep showing up and like be consistent and string together like weeks and months of training. and. Be patient because sometimes it takes a while to see the results, but if you stick with it and stay consistent, big things will happen. I'd say going off that, like consistency and just being smart with your running, like for me, if you would have come up to like high school me and say like, oh, you're going to like win a national title, I would have been like, that's crazy. <laughs> but um, just kind of always being there and just like always being healthy and being able to build season after season and just kind of after a while you just start to feel better and you start to feel more confident in your races and you're able to handle more so I think you can really like test your limits when you run smart and consistent. Well then thanks for the interview guys. The YouTube legend. Introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about yourself. I am Gwen Jorgensen. I won the triathlon at the Rio Olympics and I have a one and a half year old son and I'm now running marathons and yes I just started a YouTube channel. I wouldn't say I'm a legend but um, yes, yes you are. <laughs> trying to trying to connect with fans that way which is pretty exciting to be able to have this platform to do that. Yeah what made you want to start a YouTube channel? You being a, a Rio gold medalist? Uh, to be honest my husband kind of forced me. <laughs> he said this is his baby he called it um, his this YouTube channel. So, okay. Um, you know he's given up so much for me and he supports me full-time so that I'm able to 
to be a professional athlete and a mom and this is something that he wanted to do he wanted to start a YouTube channel so I said I could do this for you <laughs> so does he really like run everything and tell you what videos that you're gonna be shooting and stuff yeah but I like that um, yeah you know I want to just like be able to go throughout my day just do what I do yeah. and and him and Talbot, who've been uh, capturing everything, they just kind of say, Gwen, this is what you're doing today. <laughs> um, or they'll just follow me, follow me around, yeah. which is pretty good. Yeah, that's like the basis of a YouTube video. Yes. <laughs> Someone is following you around. Day in life. <laughs> yeah, seriously, though. We think our life's boring, but other people watch it. Exactly. So. <laughs> that's the story of my whole life. How has the transition been from triathlon to marathon? It's been crazy, um, but in a good way. I love being a part of the Bar Bowerman Track Club. We're actually here on Nike campus right now, which is amazing. It's basically like a little community inside mm -hmm. of a town. Uh, they have their own buses that go around from yeah, like building to building. crazy. It is, and this is a great facility that we're in today, and they have other ones with pools and workout stuff. So to be able to have this facility so close to home has been amazing. I live less than two miles away, so I ride my bike and I'm just able to do everything here in Portland, which is awesome. Um, how has the training been? Like, how does it compare to triathlon training? So in triathlon, I feel like a typical day would be I'd wake up, I'd go for a run, come home, go for an hour and a half swim, come home and go for like a two hour bike. <laughs> and Just a little bit of, a bit of cardiovascular just, exercise. Yeah, just a little bit, not much. Um, <laughs> and in running, it's I wake up and in triathlon I would always go for a, a run in the morning fasted and it'd be super slow, like I'd run nine minute pace. Um, and now being a runner, I wake up and I make sure I have like substance for breakfast. So I have a big bowl of oatmeal, wait about an hour, go for a run and the run's harder. It's, you know, probably more like seven minute per mile and it's longer. And then normally I do a lot more gym in, in running as well. So we have like a focus where I'm actually using weights where in triathlon it was, <laughs> I'm doing gym and I do like clamshells, 10 of them and be like, I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's my gym. So now in running, it's more focused hour and a half, um, you know, hex bar squats, doing things with weights. And then, um, yeah, have another run in the afternoon. So it's more kind of down to two workouts versus three a day. But for some reason, I feel like it's just as much time. I think it's because in running, you're really prone to injury. Yeah. And that's something that I've struggle with I guess all runners do and so I have to make sure I'm doing a bunch of prehab so before I run I'm taking half an hour 45 minutes doing exercises just to make sure the body's warmed up and that's something that's been a huge change in triathlon I could wake up literally roll out of bed and just run <laughs> yeah do you notice like the impact is a lot different on the body it's, the recovery time is different? yeah the recovery times is way different um you know in triathlon there'd be days when I wouldn't run and when you run every single day and you're running faster um, and longer, it's just your body gets so fatigued. And it's a, if it's a, it's a different fatigue than that, like cardio mm -hmm. fatigue. It's this, like, just whole body. <laughs> I don't know how to describe it. You're like joints ache. You feel like yes, a 50 year old yes. person. Yeah. Which one is harder, traveling or running? <laughs> uh, I'm going to say running. I mean, I'm less successful yeah. at it, so it must be harder, right? <laughs> That's a good way to put it. And what are your future goals for running? Yeah, my big future goal is first, you know, qualify for uh, the 2020 Olympics. So we have the trials in the marathon in February of 2020. So that's coming up. That's kind of the most immediate big goal. Okay, so we talked a little bit, you and I talked a little bit earlier about the change in the Olympic trials qualifying. Yes. Can you explain a little bit about what has happened in the past <laughs> month or so and what, how you feel about it? Yeah, so the IAAF and USA Track and Field, um, there's been new standards that have come out. And to give you some background, I guess the the standard in the marathon has dropped about 14 minutes. So um, <laughs> that's a that's a huge yeah. difference. And um, we just learned about it. And there's not much time really to kind of get those standards. And so a lot of people, I think, have been talking a lot about it. And it's been kind of like this buzz going around. And for me... I am so new to the sport. I'm like, oh, sweet. This is what it is. This is what it is. It's kind of been nice to just be new to the sport because I don't know any different. So for me, this is what it is, and we just kind of do it. Anything else you want to say, or do you want to plug your, your YouTube channel? <laughs> yeah, follow me. Subscribe to a... I always say subscribe wrong, and my husband gets so mad. Subscribe. Yes, subscribe to my YouTube channel, Gwen Jorgensen. That'd be awesome. Um, yeah, just... I talk a lot about just day in the life. I do some food stuff and running and just what it's like to be a professional runner. There you go.
<laughs> Thank you. All right, introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about who you are. My name is Matthew Sentrowitz. Um, I'm a 1,500-meter runner for Nike, the Byron Track Club specifically here in Beaverton, Oregon. What are some of your like main accomplishments? I'd probably say the number one is the Olympic gold medal in Rio 2016. Um, I've won World Indoor Championships as well and then five U.S. Outdoor titles, so that's kind of my resume right there in a nutshell. Yeah, just a short list of accomplishments. <laughs> so you've had a pretty big change recently. Yeah. Now you're running for Bowerman Track Club. How has the transition been from Oregon Project? Yeah, it's been good. It's been a really smooth transition, actually. Um, I was just telling the gentleman earlier, just like, I feel like the group is a lot like kind of a, a college team where it's just like we all do a lot of things together from not just working out and, and um, core and lifts, but a lot of activities outside of running, which has kind of made it really enjoyable. And um, we're such a deep team that when you have those long workouts that consist of like 10 miles of work, you barely have to lead a mile of it just because there's so many bodies out there. So it definitely makes working out a lot easier. We just kind of sit in there and, and enjoy the ride. So um, I've enjoyed it so much so far and um, hopefully, uh, uh, yeah, I can get more involved with some of these workouts and as the season progresses and everyone kind of comes together um, I feel like I've just gotten a taste so far. So so looking into the next Olympics Being the Olympic champion. How are no you pressure. going into? Yeah, no pressure whatsoever How are you gonna go into this race mentally? I mean, I feel like as long as I approach it the way I did a couple years ago, you know and, and Can you talk a little way, bit more about that too? Yeah. Like how you went into the final just with so much confidence because you did yeah. lead basically straight from the gun Yeah, yeah, yeah I think, you know, for me, it's just like, if you put any more added pressure, I mean, there's really enough pressure on the line, you know what I mean? You you realize what's at stake, you see the people in the crowds, you you know you know who's tuning in. I mean, my phone is blown up from people I haven't talked to for years that are like, are you in the Olympics? Are you good, good luck? You know, so I mean, you know what's at stake. So I don't think you need to really add any pressure. I just kind of yeah. approach it, and I know it's easier to say than do, but I approach it like it's any other race um, that I'd run here in the US or a Diamond League meet. And um, I mean, they're the same faces that I've been racing the previous four years so why change anything you know yeah. um, so for me yeah just kind of like try to keep my cool I crack jokes throughout the day um, <laughs> you know I don't really change too much even with diet like I'm not trying to like yeah. cut a few extra pounds and everything is yeah. you know the haze in the barn it's yeah, just like yeah. <laughs> just be cool be chill be yourself and um, you know I got to that point for a reason you know so and um, yeah that's kind of how I approach it if you could give all of the high schoolers one tip to improve Throughout just your one. career, yeah, just, just or a one. few, or a few. People Super are always fruit. asking for tips, okay. especially guys, but okay. I'm not a guy, so maybe it's different. I got you. I don't know. I think I think a good tip. Um when I was in high school, you know, I had some really good coaches along the way. I've been blessed with just good um, mentors and people in my corner. And I found from like my high school coach, including my father, just they always held something back with me, especially in high school. And that allowed me to progress when I went yeah. to college and then even so after college. So, you know, when you're young, you're like super motivated and you're like, I got to do this, I got to do that. And you're looking around and you see what everyone else is doing. And it can be very overwhelming and you think you need to do more. But in reality, you know, especially if you like your question, you want to keep keep progressing um hold a little something back you know and, and that actually ends up being harder to do yeah. than working harder yeah. you know and um at least if you're if you're serious and you're passionate about it and you're motivated it ends up being harder to do than um than other because they're also we could all just go run as many miles as we want until our legs fall off you know yeah. or <laughs> sprint until you can't um hardly breathe so i mean i just feel like just holding a little something back you know if you think um 10 times 400 is a good workout maybe just do eight times 400 you know yeah. and and save the 10 times 400 for the next Next year or the next season so um, always do less when you think when you're on the fence of what what I should do less or more less is always better for progressing in yeah. the future so what are you holding back right now for next year I'm almost 30 <laughs> I'm holding nothing back I've already shown all my cards the last few years I'm, I'm maxed out right now I'm talking back in high school going back now I'm everything's exposed <laughs> all right thank you yeah What's up? How are how are the pegs Ooh. feeling on the feet? So good, soft and smooth. Is this her first time wearing the pegs? Yeah, actually. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Gosh, I'm scared. <laughs> Proud of you. Uh, walk up straight to the bucket of cold brew, and they have multiple options. Got my cold brew. I don't really know what this is. A little training area, probably. Do you guys know what this is? I don't know, but I'm having a good time and I'm happy to be here. <laughs> and the weather is gorgeous. Gorgeous. About to take some pictures. What 
What do you want? What's your vision? Nike running session. It's the entrance to the headquarters, I'm pretty sure. One of many. Like, Look at my frog. And she's like, you need to respect my boundaries. And he's like, yeah, I'm gonna put you in the lake. And she's like, you better not. And he's like, <laughs> okay, I will listen to you. All right, I'm here with someone that you may know. Um, why don't you introduce got yourself? Messy braided. <laughs> oh, guys, it's a hot mess. Fast, fast braid. Fast braid Thursday. Friday <laughs> on a Thursday. Um, Hi, guys. I'm Colleen. Steeple Squigs. Steeple Squigs on IG. Um, yeah. Tell us a little bit about like what events you run, your PRs, accolades. Yeah, I usually run the Steeple Chase, um, Steeple Squigs, but I also run the 1500 and Mile. Um, um, recent indoor <laughs> Mile Champ, I US won, Champ. I won uh, indoors in the Mile this year uh, for the first time. It was my first. Uh, and our first um, U.S. championship. Wow, yeah. impressive! Yeah, yeah. Um, what, are, what are your PRs? I ran 4:22 this year at Milrose in the mile, which is my PR. <laughs> and <laughs> and then in the steeple, I've run 9:10. Okay, uh, as my best. The American record is nine flat now, so that's what I'm kind of gunning for this year. Is okay, that nine mark. Yeah, right and your teammate has that, right? Yep, that's Courtney Furt has the American record now. So I'm training with her, and hopefully we can push each other to get under nine. How is it training with like such fast people? Oh my god, yeah, we have twelve <laughs> Bowerman. We call ourselves the Bowerman Babes. And yes, we've had a few on the <laughs> yeah. vlog already, but so there's twelve of us now, which is that's so huge. Like, who has twelve training partners? Yeah, who has training partners. It's so fun. Um, we have anyone from like the 800, Fast Kate runs the 8, and, and so shall be, and fast, all the way Fast Kate, call each other by your Instagram <laughs> handles. <laughs> all the way up to the marathon, Shalane, Amy, and Gwen are, you know, training for the marathon, so, and everything in between, steeple, 5K, 10K, and everything. Yeah. Um, so yeah, a lot of badass babes to go <laughs> work out with, which is huge. Yeah, so how was it winning, like, what was your, what were your thoughts going into the final of um, this year's US? Yeah, so the last two years, I took second to Shelby, my training partner. <laughs> Um, another American record holder in 5K, <laughs> nine-time U.S. champion. She's a freaking badass. <laughs> and so I've taken second to her the last two years. This year I was just like, not again. Like, <laughs> I am going to freaking win it this time. So going in, um, I just had this mentality of like, don't let Shelby get in front of you. That was basically my race plan. Because she has a like, lethal kick. So yeah, just thought, I'm like, sure everyone that's watching yeah. this has already seen her kick. but <laughs> And if you watch the race back, all the announcers are like, right now, this is when Shelby lays the hammer down on Colleen. I was like watching you back later being like, no thanks. Me. <laughs> they were like, just wait for Shelby. She's going to kick her now. She's going to get her now. She's not getting her. She's not getting her. Colleen's with the win. They were like, everyone was shocked. I was like, okay, they just die. I'm fast too. <laughs> That's so funny. Oh my God. I mean, she has a great kick. So I was just trying to put enough space on her coming into like that last 400 where if she was going to go around me, she was going to have to go wide and she's going to have to go fast wide. And on indoor track, that's really hard because the, the turns, you know, are so sharp. Yeah. And, um, tough to take those turns. So I was like, if she's going to do it, I'm going to make her work for it. Um, yeah. But she just didn't quite have it. I ran like a 60.09. I think, oh like my. 400, oh my God. Which I was really proud of. So um, yeah, it felt good. You know, my first, first title um first hopefully of, of many yeah um, it was really fun nice yeah. and how was the run today compared to winning that <laughs> title so this one was super fun emma and i ran yeah wait um, give me the stats 4.7 miles okay at almost five. 730 pace oh yeah girl i'm quick i'm fast <laughs> call me shelby it's a beautiful day out here it is um, and uh yeah i don't know what the weather is but it's like i don't know like 60 degrees yeah it's feet? nice it's not raining it's so not raining. yeah how far are you going the today. Hollister Trail um, here at Nike. I'll probably go another like four and a half. Try okay. Try and do nine. Nice. Getting in that quality some, miles. Yeah, from some Achilles stuff. So all, yeah. the, all the babes are on the track over here at Michael Johnson track working out this morning. Um, <laughs> she gets to run with me. The washed up nerf. I was going to run by myself, so I'm really glad I'm going to run with me. <laughs> well, thanks for running with me and pitting. <laughs>
<laughs> Thanks. And that's basically it for the week. I'm headed out tonight. Um, it's been a crazy past couple of days and I had so much fun. Every time I come up here, I really rediscover my love for running, like the sport itself. Um, the passion behind the shoes and like the products that Nike makes is absolutely unreal and it really inspires me like I am no by no means a really big sneakerhead, but like every time I listen to them talk about the different type of shoes that they make it really inspires me to get out and go try the shoes go run and also being surrounded by like the Bowerman athletes obviously re-inspires me to start running again so thank you Nike for flying me out here it was super fun I'm so grateful for the opportunity I'm so glad I get to share with all of you guys and I hope this inspires you to get out the door and start running um, or continue running and getting after it if you're already doing it so again thank you Nike thank you fellas for watching this video give it a thumbs up if you like when I go to the Nike campus hang out with these athletes and learn more about shoes because I know a lot of you guys always ask me for shoe information um, but here I am giving it to you so there you go if you're not subscribed already, if you're a runner watching this, you might as well just subscribe because obviously that's what we talk about on this channel. And fellas, I'll see you in the next video. Peace out, fellas.